is Charles Glasner, Hudson River Antiques. I'm here representing the Rhinebeck Antique Emporium for uh, Ruby Lane. Uh, today I'm here with Lee Kino and I'm representing the Rhinebeck Antique Emporium talking about many objects that represent different dealers from the center as well as some dealers who are members of Ruby Lane. Uh, today, we're actually specifically, hi Lee. Thanks, thanks for being specifically here. Specifically, we're talking about uh, first an Ami Phillips portrait. Listen, thanks for being here. And, I, and when you came in with this, I said, oh my gosh, Ami Phillips, the great itinerant painter, a portrait of a young guy in a yellow chair with a book, and I, I, I didn't expect it. I mean, so what's, right. what's the story with it? So the story is, um, I actually bought this from a hitchhiker. I picked wow. up a hitchhiker one day and uh, I asked her what she did. She said she worked in a pizza parlor, but she was really trying to get out of town. I said, well, I was an antiques dealer. She said, well, you don't want to buy an Ami Phillips, do you? And <laughs> I said made an appointment. You. Yeah, I made an appointment, went to her house. And sure enough, this was hanging covered in cobwebs over her bed. Um, wow. Where, where was this in the end? This in was the... right outside of Woodstock, Woodstock and it's not a willow. Right. Um, his name wow. is Montgomery Newkirk, old Woodstock family, family history. It was this lady's... It was inherited through her family. Right. It was originally through her family. The Newkirk uh, family of... Yep, who Newkirk lived near family Woodstock. of Ulster County. That's, yep. a that's an and, old name uh, there. Yes, yep. Yeah. And um, the that rest is it's history. He's holding Milton's works. Uh, okay, um, yep. It says right, right on the picture, right? right? Yep. Yeah. And, you know... I wish he was a girl with a cat and a red dress. No, listen. Uh, but uh, he's kind of a wispy-haired guy. He's a um, young guy. Stylized with lots of fluffy shirt and a nice pin. The condition is, is excellent I mean, of, of, the, of the work. From, have you ever had it uh, cleaned? So I had or? it lightly cleaned and I had it relined okay. by Tom Yost okay. about four years ago. Yep, okay. Yep, Tom Yost is a great uh, conservator. And, and here, yep, you can see the, the relining. It looks like it's brand new here, but here, I think this is, I, it's nice to see this. Uh, I, I, I like people to see it also, right? Uh, right. The, the a relining is simply a restretching of the original canvas on top of a new canvas. And, and, and here, it looks like Tom even incorporated the same nails that were used on right. the on the original one in which for i some, really like for some reason someone had coated it with uh rabbit hide glue oh. on the back oh, and, and glued it made it. it a little too stiff they glued it to another canvas no, so just, just to itself to itself just and it made it buckle right they were trying to make it tighter and it actually made so. it worse I mean, it, right made it, it, it worse. made it sag but so this, after bringing it to tom but it's on the original stretcher and in the frame i got it on yeah white pine white pine this is natural what you expect right and and the frame was was was, uh, was what i what it came yep, in right? yeah it would have probably been only i think this frame my guess is only like literally seems like 20 30 years later maybe 40 years later than the painting was right. done because it's a solid uh 1850s frame, and the painting was done in the 1830s. I'd say the I style, so. right? The ancestor, the lady that you picked up as a hitchhiker, right? Montgomery Newkirk, right? Right. And when was he born? Roughly, did 1790. Yep, makes sense. So, uh, so he's probably about 30 years old there, maybe. Yep, yeah, yeah. If it, if yes, that, that yeah, because the style, of the, yeah, and then when I look at it, and when I first looked at it, I was thinking 20s, but, uh, I mean, th 30s, but you're, you're right. It could be right around 1830-ish. Right. Yep. Sort that, of in a Hitchcock chair? Yes. Yeah, what? Lo lovely. Painted fancy chair? Yep. With a, probably a flower on the back of it, you know? Could be. And uh, I, I like it when you can see, the, you can actually see the, um, when you when the the lights raking the the original canvas underneath right. the great the texture of it, and and it doesn't look like there's much in painting at all. There's cracklore on the surface. Uh, you see that cracklore, which is all because right. you went to Tom Yost, who the conservator. He made sure that that uh, was flattened kept. and kept. Right. Yeah. So it's not in danger. It's it, it's of it, anything bad happening to it for a good another. 200 years at least <laughs> right. i mean it's the paint's going to be stable so again i found this in a house about 30 years ago in woodstock new york really 
Um, original, original paint. paint. He, has a, he has a mustache, doesn't he? Yeah. 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 I, I don't think I've ever seen a, a pumpkin, Halloween pumpkin with a mustache. Well, I think they all do from this period. Yeah, you're, no, come to think of it, you're right. But most of them don't even have this much paint. They're all beat up. Right. Right. So they should have a stick. They're a parade. Yep. Yep. Right, yep. and they would have they would have a tissue inside right. to kind of fuzz over the uh, the candle inside. There are parade yep. parade lanterns right. about 1904, yep. made in Toledo, Ohio, yep. and at the time they were somewhat mass produced. Now all of a sudden they're becoming extremely collectible, right. and about a year ago one sold for an awful lot of money at auction. Yep. Um, I, uh, They're also referred to as folk art these days, and I'm not so sure, you know, to me, the definition of folk art mm -hmm. is more one-of-a-kind right, right. folk art, whereas some people refer to this kind of thing now as folk art. I hear you. Uh, if you think about it, though, weather vanes, which often, often were, each one's actually unique, but they were <clears throat> hammered on molds. Weather vanes were hammered on molds, which, which uh, you know, were... They, and they were mass, mass produced, produced, yeah, in a way. But each one ended up coming out differently, and they each had a diff different wear and abrasion, which caused them to, each one to look unique, I guess. And, right. But I hear Patina you. Patina over the over the century. Yes. Right. Yeah. That's so. It's over a hundred years old. Yes, exactly. And and the cool thing about this is that you can also hang it. And I, I you know, they uh, they often have this. I know, but sometimes they're broken off. Right. Right. I know. And this is complete to to with this little loop on top right so and it can be there which is the way it, isn't it's that great that yeah that's so nice holder. that's so nice that's really nice so right around 1900 1905 right there right that's that's very uh, so talk about original probably got the you did you put that candle in there or no it was in there you I might have, have. <laughs> you might have 30 years ago years, very so. cool and appropriate for this time of year right you know Thanks, Charles. What's the story? It looks like it says W. Hart it's here. William, William Hart, right. Scottish-born artist, mm -hmm. American. Mm -hmm. He lived in America. Um, nice, nice painting, a nice gold frame. Uh, Suzanne Whiting is a dealer who does the Rhinebeck show. Uh, she's a dealer in the Rhinebeck Antiques Emporium. And um, she's represented here today at the... Uh, at the Ruby Lane um, show. Online show. Well, thanks Online for show. thanks for bringing it in for her. And then it lo looks like it's absolutely untouched. The surface, uh, the impasta towers, you could see very clearly. Almost, you shouldn't really touch a painting, I guess. But I'm going to gently go like this, and it's like a mountain range here with the, the white paint that form the, forms the, the clouds, which, right. which heart piled on, and. Uh, very nicely done, it and, and and a nice nice uh, framing job on the on it. Not the original frame, but an appropriate frame uh, right. for the piece. Nice gold leafing. Nice gold leafing, yeah. And uh, you see the little the leaves, right? Uh, you can see where the leaves end, <laughs> little, right. which you should, right? And she deals in lots of Chinese things, other sorts of porcelain um, right. paintings. I love I love Chinese porcelain. Uh, tell her to call me. Right. Lovely teapot, right? Neo, kind of neoclassical, early 19th century. Right. And you Phil said Philadelphia maker. Right. Um, Lewis. Right. I see Lewis here. Yeah, in Philadelphia. Um, and the dealer's name is Deidre O'Halloran, and she does the Rhinebeck Antiques show as well. And she's a second generation silver dealer. Her mother was a silver dealer as well. Mm -hmm. It's always interesting, uh, the knowledge that gets passed down yes. from generation to the next. Uh, but she deals in lots of early China, lots of, lots of early things, as well as lots of silver. And her knowledge is vast. Um, well, this, the, the, this, this piece, I, it's really very cool because it still has its uh, what, what appears to be absolutely original handle right. with uh, evidence of the ebonizing that was on it, the right. ebonized this ebonized um, ha hardwood handle, because these often are replaced, as you know, and, and right. like, uh, very nice that that survived this acanthus leaf that scrolls up, and it actually is ergonomically effective because you can really you, you really use that 
people, right. actually, if it, right. something good. And I know someone who uses their early 19th century teapots, uh, not the Paul Revere one, but <laughs> they, they use the nice neoclassical one. Uh, and I, the, the bead work on this, I just have to say, is great, isn't it? It's really, really right. fine. The, the detailing. Beadwork. The detailing is really exquisite. Even the shell that's at the yes. top of the... Yeah, it really is. It really is. It's it's very, very nice. And and this, you you said when I was looking at it earlier, this has a surprise to it, right? So it says engraved here, this belonged to, to Sarah Wister, W-I-S-T-A-R. Of course, one of the oldest Philadelphia names. I've had furniture from the Wister family that, right. that descended in it in their family and from, I think they're, from the 18th century, they were Quakers and, um, but they, very prominent Quakers. Uh, Quakers didn't and live like Shakers, like right. the Shakers. Right. They, they were, they had incredible objects. So, and it, right, that, and clearly, again, this is high style. Yes. City style, oh, Philadelphia, yeah. as yeah. compared to uh, itinerant artists like Ami Phillips, right. who was a, you know, a country a guy. Country who guy. traveled no. around. This is um, formal. Yeah. Right. Very formal. Really nice. Right. Really nice piece. Two very nice Tiffany Studios mm -hmm. candlesticks. Candlesticks. Each, right. Not a pair, of course, obviously. One's tall, one's, but one's uh, shorter. But each special in its own way with this wonderful um, uh, swelled, interspersed lobes here and, and a glass lobes. And this. Uh, I found out earlier the hard way, uh, the, the wonderful removable bobesh uh, with great patination. I mean, this really is nicely, a, a surface is really important. Right. Right, Charles? Patina, surface, it's all uh, original. Yep. No one tried to polish it. No. No one tried to uh, change the original finish or... Uh, on, on either one, right. Right. This is, uh, this is a nice Tiffany Studios, New York. Uh, uh, base really uh, solid, solid uh, right. bronze base, and, and this, this is uh, Tiffin, Tiffany Studios, New York as well. Right, number fifty six thirty five. Yeah, uh, this is this is this this is funny. They they and they had different the uh, different uh, appearances. There's a little more verdigris on this taller one, right? right. But, but both really special in their own way, and uh, and absolutely right because there are so many fakes out there. Right. Tiffany things and and especially the lamps, the things that bring the the, the the big money. But these are relatively inexpensive to have a to have a Tiffany Studios piece, you know, right. for a relatively inexpensive price. So um, really and nice. These belong to uh, MTE Antiques from Norwalk, Connecticut. Okay. Right. Uh, Marion Terry Ellertherian. Right. Um, dealers for many, many years. They deal in lots of high-end china and glass and um, small paintings and really a nice. lot of Tiffany, Galet, all kinds of art glass, things like that. Really nice. Um, and yeah. so again, this is high style, but a different period. Right, in New York. Um, right. Yeah. In New York, you, 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 if you're really in the, if you're, you, were, you were stylish, you were it, it, it said a lot about you if you had a Tiffany Studios piece in your home, right? I mean, right. Okay, it said, it said you've, you've kind of well, made again, it. again, different, different class, different, right. Right. different genre than maybe somebody who would have an Ami Phillips in the right. house. Right, right. In the same time frame. Right. Okay, Charles, this is very cool. It's, it's almost like pop art, you know, it, it pops out at you. Right. <laughs> you know? So this belongs to Kathy Lembo Antiques, who is a member of the Ruby Lane family. And this is hers. She also has a booth at the Rhinebeck Antique Emporium. And this is a 19th century penny rug that was found in northern Vermont. Um, kind of interesting. So penny rugs originally were used on the floor. But nowadays, they're hung on the wall, mm -hmm. sometimes yeah. used on tabletops. Right. Um, very graphic. What's interesting about this to me is that it has a Star of David, which makes it a little yes. collectible in a different sort of way. Right. Really good value here, I, right. I think. For, right. This could hold a wall, you know, a by itself. A lot of decoration. Yeah, a lot of decoration. Right. Really cool. Thanks for, thanks for bringing it over for, for the, uh, the sure. owner. Charles, thanks for being part of the Fall Antiques that Ryan Beck posted on Ruby Lane. It's exciting, it's great, and we're, we're so happy 